Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well on this wonderful weekend and today we're going to be finishing off the Dutch naval tech tree. After having a look at the destroyers, some of the battle boats and even some of the weird and wacky designs that came out of the Dutch, it's time to move on to the larger ships which will obviously dominate the top ranks of the tech tree. Now before we do start though, uh, Cacti does have a few notes so when it comes to the tech tree so take it away Cacti. So, our rank 5 ships are modern uh, frigates at this point. But now that Ga uh, Gaijin has said, alright, bigger is better, and they're going to be adding in uh, really large heavy cruisers, we are planning to change uh, our tech tree a bit. So, right now, we will still cover these modern frigates, and they will stay in the tech tree. But uh, at a later point, we're going to be adding in things like Dreadnought classes to this uh, list. But I thought I'd just point it out... Um, the Dutch do have Dreadnought classes, and they will be in this tech tree at some point. We, we will not be covering them in this video. Yeah, that's wonderful. And obviously this tech tree was made uh, before the announcement uh, of you know, the, the idea of adding battle cruisers to War Thunder. So it makes sense that they're not here. But yeah, just uh, look for the future. I'm sure the uh, tech tree will be updated if you follow, obviously, the uh, Discord or the War Thunder Live uh, of Super Cacti. You'll be noted about the changes when and if uh, they happen. So let's get started uh, with the first vehicle. We're going to be covering both ranks, uh, both last ranks uh, in this video, just to um, try and give you a general picture of what the top tier of the Dutch would look like. So the first one is the Van Kingsbergen, uh, which you can see here. Take it away, soldier. What is this machine about? So this is, you can still say this is a sloop, but as in surface, this was meant as a training ship or an instruction ship. So it was laid down around 1939. Um, and then it basically was trying to replace the older sloops like the Johan Maurits van Nassau. Uh, but then, after the outbreak of the war, uh, sub submarines obviously were pretty dangerous. So the ship was kind of meant as an escort vessel to protect vessels, obviously, from submarines. Uh, it, so, through the ages, through the years, this ship was modified uh, accordingly to accommodate for the fact that it, it w was more of a anti-submarine ship. So it started out with four 120 millimeters. Uh, four 40 millimeters, four 50 cals, and two 75 millimeters. But then World War II rolled around and it was a bit altered. So the, the two 40s were removed, what the 175 was removed, and four 20 millimeter Orlikons were added. And then in 1951, around that age, uh, the ship was basically completely uh, altered. But this is the 1945 variant, so the more uh, World War II variant. Uh, to accommodate for the submarines, the ship was also modified to get depth charge racks, uh, depth charge mortars, and uh, some kind of sonar equipment and mouse traps, which are uh, practically hedgehogs. So this is pretty much an anti-submarine uh, vessel that was just changed to an anti submarine vessel from being in more of an instruction ship, which is pretty odd. Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. Like, uh, there is obviously going to be, um, in War Thunder, always some kind of training machines. And as long as they have, you know, weaponry and armaments and enough to uh, be, well, kind of useful, it's nice to see them be represented in this tech tree. The next vehicle we're having a look at is the Tromp. And uh, let's uh, take it away, Cacti. Is this, so technically, is this the first cruiser that we have, you know, in this tech tree? Yes, the Tromp class cruiser is a light cruiser to Dutch. So in this tech tree, this would be the first one you get. Um, we have two of them actually in the tech tree. We have the Tromp and we have the Jacob, uh, Jacob von Heemskerk. I, uh, I'll cover them both, but first let's talk about the Tromp. So weaponry wise, the Tromp has um, 650 millimeter guns, four 40 millimeter bofers. Those are two in twin mounts. Also, the main guns are um, three turrets uh, that, uh, that each carry two guns. It also has four 50 cals spread around. And during World War II, we of course added more AA. Um, four 75mm guns were added, four additional Bofors were added, and six 20mm order guns were also added. So when you look at weaponry wise, you have rather large guns for light cruisers, or well, like, I suppose standard guns for light cruisers, 150mm guns. 
And them being in uh, twin mounted turrets is also quite nice because this means that you can get all your guns on target rather easily. Uh, when we look at the Jakob von Heemskerk, um, it's funny, they're both the same class, they're both a Tromp class, but they differ in armaments quite a lot. The Jakob von Heemskerk has 1002 mm guns. So here you decrease in caliber, but you have four more main guns. And these are also mounted in 5 times 2 so that is 5 turrets with each carrying 2 guns. Then it has 4 40mm uh, Vickers pom-pom machine guns, so that is 1 turret in a quad mount, 6 20mm Hispano cannons, and during uh, World War II we added 4 40mm Bofors and 8 20mm Orlikans. So you can clearly see that the Jakob von Heemskerk is the better one of this class, it has more anti-aircraft weaponry, and it also has the better fire rate. If we look in game, if you look at stuff like the Brooklyn class, you can see that fire rate is very important if you want to just hammer someone down. So yes, the Tromp has bigger guns, but the Jakob von Heemstek will, in my opinion, be better because you have more bullets in the air. Um, bit of history, the Tromp class cruisers, they were used in the Dutch East Indies. Both of them actually survived, but the Tromp was decommissioned in 1955 and later sold for scrap. The Jakob von Heemskerk. Well, it became an artillery instruction ship in 1947, but also sadly decommissioned and sold for scrap. So both of them no longer exist, which is kind of sad. Yeah, it's unfortunate that after World War II, you know, in the 50s and 60s, a lot of these really interesting ships were just kind of left to the wayside. I mean, there wasn't really much use for them, especially with uh, specific technologies coming out, such as, of course, missiles and other wonderful things, uh, such as very guided torpedoes, uh, kind of making larger ships not irrelevant, uh, but not in the greatest space. The next uh, vehicle that we're looking at is the premium of uh, rank uh, 4 or rank 5, uh, whichever one this is, and uh, we're having a look at the Van Galen. So let us know about this one, Soldier. What is this vehicle about? So this is definitely more of a modern frigate. Uh, it may, perhaps it would go up in BR since it obviously carries things like missiles, but that's pretty much up for debate since we don't have ships like that in-game yet. Um, so this is pretty much a modern, modern frigate, which means it has one 76mm Automalera, and then you get stuff like launchers, such as the Simbat, uh, SSN-26s, uh, and other SSMs, and torpedo tubes. So it's a bit all over the place. It mostly relies on, well, missiles and one gun. So it's it's a pretty odd uh, frigate in that way. It was uh, after you know being decommissioned and basically it uh, it was sold to Indonesia, and that that happened to quite a lot of Dutch ships. So this is one of those that was just sold to Indonesia uh, after its use. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty much a one of, uh, one of the modern frigates you could uh, you could see. And this one was put in as a premium. Yeah, and as we've seen with War Thunder in the files and also in the community, there's a lot of chat about stuff such as these surface-to-surface -surface anti ship missiles. And I definitely think uh, as we go forward, especially as we talked about before with battle cruisers being announced, I would be incredibly surprised if we don't see a f uh, at least a push into those style, especially for people like the Soviets and, as we can see here, the Dutch as well. So, uh, the next video vehicle is, I'm guessing, the Java, a 1921 cruiser, so very much in that same ballpark as a lot of machines in uh, the, well, in the tech trees already. So tell us about this one, Cacti, what is this one all about? So the Java is named after an uh, island in the Dutch East Indies. It's in Indonesia, if you're wondering. <laughs> The Java, um, the cruiser itself, its design can actually be compared to the Emden, which you have in the German Navy in game right now. This one has 1050 mm guns, but they're all spread around the ship in single mounts. So most of them are in the center line, and by that I mean they're like in the front, in the center of the ship, and in the rear. So they can shoot from uh, either direction, so left or the right. But some of the other guns, just like the Emden in game, are mounted on the side, and they can only shoot towards one side. So getting all those 10 guns uh, in, the in the same rod side is not going to be easy. Well, it's going to be impossible, actually. But overall, uh, the Java, it's, 
It's quite a nice cruiser, actually. It, it goes 31 knots, which is 57 kilometers an hour. That's not bad for a light cruiser. When it comes to AA weaponry, it has 8 40mm Bofors. These are four twin mounts and 850 cows. So AA armament, um, well, the Bofors are great, but it's not the best. And also, there's, there does not seem to be any secondary armaments. It's just the 150s, then some 40 mils and 50 cows. But yeah, um, in the tech tree, this is the second cruise you can get your hands on after the von Kinsbergen. It's no, not going to be the best, of course, but it's a very nice starter ship. Yeah, the the problem that you see a lot with cruisers is that some of them are really built to just take on other ships, and then others are really built with the AA armament in mind. And then sometimes that means that they're missing key components, which are kind of useful in War Thunder. And even though the secondaries a lot of the time, you know, especially if you're engaging at long ranges, might not be that useful, against destroyers and against smaller ships, they're definitely something that you sometimes have to rely on. And seeing a ship which doesn't have any, well, that kind of sucks, but at least it has all of those 40 millimeters to maybe try and make up for it. The next vehicle is another uh, cruiser, but I'm not even going to try and pronounce it because I, whoops, I know I'm going to get it wrong. Uh, what is this vehicle, soldier, and how do you pronounce it? Um, so this is the router named after the really famous uh, well, sea hero, if you want to call it that, that the Nyan's had. Um, and this is probably the, like, the most well-known uh, Dutch cruiser. Uh, it, it, it has a pretty unique look. It has seven guns, and which is already a bit odd, because normally cruisers tend to have an even number, or perhaps have nine, like in triple mounts, but this one has seven. It has three double mounts, so one in, one in the front and two in the back, and it has one singular turret on top of the uh, the double mount, so you have seven guns. Uh, it also has 10 40 millimeter bow forces, and it has 850 cals. At the time, this was complete. the The armor wasn't really impressive. The guns themselves weren't uh, were not that impressive either, com in comparison to, for example, the Leander class of the British. But what the Dutch did have was pretty advanced fire control systems. So this ship in game would probably be a pretty accurate cruiser. Um, to kind of offset the other parts uh, that it doesn't really have. Sp uh, speed is like 32 knots. It's not too bad, but again, it's pretty light, so it kind of get can get a bit uh, a bit faster than other things. Uh, it also could carry uh, float planes, but through catapults. But obviously, that's not really a mechanic in game right now. Um, and this ship was laid uh, was laid down like. 1933, and it actually uh, sunk in the Battle of the Java Sea, which is in 1942 in February, which is kind of sad. And since then, we do it, it has even become worse because this ship was actually like gone out of nowhere. It was probably like scrapped apart uh, by some people that wanted to make some buck. So that's really sad. Yeah, that is a bit of a rough story. Um, once, like, selling stuff for scrap, like, if it's in an official capacity, is already sad enough. But the fact that we can't even preserve parts of this historical machine, uh, obviously, is really, really, really sad. The next vehicle that is on the list is the last of uh, the... I just want to make sure, so I'm not being silly. One, two, three, uh, rank four. There we go. Uh, so this is the last of the rank four machines, and it is, of course, the last also 5.0 cruiser. So, uh, what is uh, this machine, Cacti, and also, how do you say that name? So this ship's name is the Seven Provincian. So that basically means the seven. Uh, what is Provincian again? God damn it, provinces. Provinces. Yeah. All right. <laughs> But yeah, um, this cruiser, it's when you look at the armament of this ship, it's it, it went through a lot of phases. So originally, these cruisers were meant to replace the older uh, Java classes, which we covered. And also, um, later on, they were also just meant to become the new cruisers. The, the Reuter, of course, got sunk in the Battle of the Java Sea, so we were in need of more, better, more powerful cruisers. 
So the original design of this ship, when it comes to weaponry, is a, a bit like a World War II cruiser. That's 10 150mm guns, 12 40 mm bow force, 850 cals, a bunch of torpedo tubes and aircraft. But these were just the designs for it. This was not the eventual um, armament that this vehicle was going to get. So eventually uh, the Germans, of course, took over the Netherlands and they had some plans for these ships as well because they were not fully completed around that time. The Germans wanted to slap in 1250mm guns, 1237s, and then some float planes. But in the end, these ships were laid down in 1939 and they were originally launched in 1950. So these are post-war cruisers, if you look at it that way. And their armaments that they eventually got actually reflects that. It has 852mm guns and then 857mm Bofor autocannons. And also it has 840mm Bofors. So this ship, it does not have the most crazy amount of guns, but the weaponry that's on board is modern weaponry. So this is a modern... Well, it's a World War II cruiser that got retrofitted to become modern. Also, a fun little detail. If you look at the background of the Tech Tree illustration, you will see a ship. And that is this ship. So if you look this ship up on the, the internet, you will see that it has a very modern look to it. But it's still just a cruiser. Now, when it comes to speed of this vehicle, uh, 32 knots. So, well, it's decent, 57 kilometers an hour. It's nothing crazy. But I think in the end, the thing that will make this ship so good, and that's also the reason why it's the last cruise you can get your hands on, is those modern guns. They're going to be extremely powerful. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the HMS Tiger, uh, which, of course, is a... Uh, well, it's it's a gift vehicle for the British tree right now, and hopefully it gets a tech tree equivalent at some points. But these modern-style cruisers with their very, very fast-firing guns are definitely an interesting prospect, and I would love to see more of them into uh, the game. The last rank is filled with some very interesting frigates, and uh, you may think, oh, well, why are these higher uh, than the cruisers? Because, of course, they're going to be smaller than them. Well, it's pretty easy, isn't it? It's because, of course, the weaponry was the large change for them, and also, I suppose, the radar or the sonar as well. So let's get started with the uh, Van Speak uh, soldier. What is this frigate about, or is this just very similar to the uh, one that we have in the uh, premium part of the tech tree? Or what are the what are the key differences between the two vehicles? So yeah, when I talked about the Von Spike as uh, the premium, I made a bit of an error. Uh, that is the older variant of the ship. That one actually still carried uh, one double mount of 110 millimeter guns, and it had some. Uh, and the this variant is the modern midlife modernization program that was given it to it, which meant it replaced the double mount with the Automalara 76 millimeter. Uh, the it had a mark, it had a mortar on the old variant, but that was removed and replaced by uh, torpedo launchers. And uh, the 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 ray the sonar was basically moved, uh, so it had a bit more of a flight deck to carry uh, the Westland Lynx. So uh, so that's basically what you get with this. You get just a bit more of a modern uh, modernization program on the older vessel uh, to, get, to give it a bit more focus on modern operations through stuff like helicopters and uh, torpedoes, but also obviously missiles. So moving on from that, uh, we also have our second Trump, or technically our third Trump, uh, of these uh, two ranks. But this is, whereas this one is a Trump-class cruiser, this one is a Trump-class frigate. So, uh, what is this one about Cacti? And also, is there something about the name, uh, which means that it's supposed to be used, you know, a few times, or is it just one of those things, kind of like the British, where they just decide that everything has to be called one specific name? Well, um, like we've covered before in past videos, we Dutch like to reuse a lot of names quite a lot. I don't really know why we do this, but I don't know exactly where the Trump name comes from. But usually it's attached to either a, a certain person in the, in the past uh, history of the Dutch that, that became important. It was a general or a captain, something like that. So the Trump-class frigate itself, uh, like you said, we, we, we just covered the Trump-class cruiser, but this is a Trump-class frigate. Um, there's a very easy way 
to tell if something is a Trump class frigate. You can kind of see it in the picture in the illustration already. On top of the bridge, there's a giant dome. This dome is, is one big radar. This, it makes the ship look kind of derpy. <laughs> but now that we've seen uh, in the latest dev server uh, stream that radar is going to become a thing for ships, that could open up a lot of well, new things for ships like these that have very advanced and large radars on the top. Uh, when it comes to weaponry, this is... Yeah, I don't think the battle rating uh, fits this vehicle that well. But yeah, this is the first uh, scary modern things we get into. It has launchers for SAM uh, missiles. It has Sea uh, Sparrow SAM missiles. It has certain Harpoon missiles. And uh, you might remember the Holland class destroyer, which we covered in the video before this, which had those um, crazy high fire rate 120 millimeter guns. Well, this one also still has it. It has a single one of these turrets placed on the front. And to make things worse, this ship has a seaways system. So this is an advanced um, anti-everything system. It can intercept missiles, it can intercept aircraft, there's anything that it can just track onto. And this system is a goalkeeper anti-aircraft system. That is the 30 uh, millimeter Gatling gun that you have on the A-10 Warthog, but then on the seaways mount. So, yeah, the battle rating, it's definitely going to have to be go up. But like I said in the beginning of this video, we're going to be reworking all of this. But yeah, this is the first like real modern, very scary ship you're going to get your hands on. Yeah, whenever the Sea Wiz is mentioned, uh, it is definitely a new power level uh, when it comes to ships. And luckily, we don't have that thing in game yet. But at least with the talk of missiles, it seems like it is an inevitability. This is the next vehicle as well, uh, the Cortinaire uh, class frigate. So why is this one so different when it comes to its BR soldier? Uh, is there a massive upgrade over the frigates that we've seen before? Or is it just uh, maybe the survivability element? Uh, what's going on with this machine? With this uh, vessel, we're looking at like uh, the, more like 1975. So this is pretty modern in that way. Um, it carries two Altamara guns. Um, it has uh, torpedo tubes, two twin mounts. It has obviously rockets. It has two quad harpoon rockets. And it has a uh, Sea Sparrow and the aircraft missile launchers. So you're looking at, again, all, a ton of uh, missile power. And it also has a goalkeeper. So don't try to even get close to this in an airplane and you will get shredded. <laughs> Um, so these, all these, all, all of the vessels that were made of this class were later sold. Um, so a lot of them went to the, the Greek navy, the Hellenic navy, and two went to the uh, Ara Arab Emirates. So, uh, so, so these still live on, you know, in, in a different, uh, uh, different place. Although they are all decommissioned by now. Uh, so yeah, but. These are pretty much, you know, modern modern frigates that have rely on a bit of gun, but mostly rockets, and torpedoes, and and the goalkeeper, which probably means, yeah, don't try to kill this; you will get shredded. <laughs> yeah, it really is a step up uh, in, well, I suppose, defensive design. It does also have a cool name. Uh, the fact that it's called the Goalkeeper is incredibly interesting. The next vehicle is the Carol Dorman, and uh, this is once again another step in the frigate area. So what is the difference about this one, Cagtai, uh, compared to some of the others that we've seen? Well, um, when you look at well, modern vehicles of these days, the differences between them tend to become very minimal. And that is kind of the case with these modern figures as well. When we look at the weaponry, it's very similar to the ships we just covered. It has 16 RIM-7 Sea Sparrow anti-air missiles, 8 Boeing Harpoon anti-ship missiles. It also lists some uh, machine guns spread around. Like when you have a modern frigate, the, la the, the last thing you're going to be thinking of is, oh, how many small machine guns did it carry? But for some reason, it's listed here. But it, it also has the uh, Mark 46 torpedoes. And if I'm not mistaken, these are modern torpedoes, which get more around the uh, homing idea, where they, they can be controlled somehow. So that could also be interesting to see how that's going to work in game. Uh, the main weaponry you're going to be using is the Alta Molera 76mm gun. 
this gun has become very standard in our modern frigates. I say you'll you'll see them basically everywhere. And of course, we can never leave out the goalkeeper anti-aircraft system. But when it comes to weaponry, it's very similar to the ships we covered before, but it's it's a different class. It's just slightly different design and layout. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, the, there are a lot of ships in the game. I mean, the, the classic example that I've actually been playing through right now, the German destroyers, a lot of them are incredibly similar with maybe slightly different, you know, AA armament or slightly different main guns. And, you know, that's completely fine. Uh, it is a part of naval where a lot of designs were incredibly similar to each other, but as long as they have their own little pizzazz, it doesn't matter too much. The next vehicle is a 6.3, and also it's one I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Uh, so what is this vehicle soldier and how do you say its name? Yeah, this is the Jakob van Heemskerk. Uh, so again, this is not a, not the cruiser, but the frigate. <laughs> because use, reusing names is fun, I suppose. Uh, and creates a lot of cool confusion. This is uh, this frigate is very similar to the Kortenaar class frigate. Um, there were only two ships of this class, and both were sold to Chile in 2005. Uh, but we're st we are looking at chips that were laid down in like 1981, so these are pretty much uh, pretty advanced because it obviously has stuff like real advanced radar. The Dutch are known for their radar. Uh, it has a goalkeeper, obviously. <laughs> it has uh, uh, Mark 46 torpedo tubes. It has harpoon missiles and other uh, similar missile systems like sea sparrows and. Basically, you're looking at a vessel that's pretty similar to the Cortana class, but it's just a, a tiny bit more modern, uh, I suppose, which uh, gives it a slight uh, notch on uh, on top of it. Yeah, with access to sea sparrows, with access to, uh, obviously, harpoons, if you don't know what they are, the anti-ship missile launches, uh, the RGM-84s, and then you have stuff, you know, as you said, like the goalkeeper system. It, I'm definitely interested to how these machines would stack up against some of the older style battleships, you know, that uh, we find around the place. Uh, and hopefully in War Thunder we do see some form of that at some point. But at least for now, uh, you know, they're just focusing on larger and larger vessels. The last vehicle in this tech tree is seen before you. And once again, I'm going to leave it to Cacti to pronounce. So what is this vehicle, Cacti? And how different is it to the other frigates that we've seen before? So here we go again with uh, the duplicate names. No, this is not the cruiser. This is the Zeven Provincian class frigate. The thing about these frigates is these are our main frigates now. They were commissioned in 2002 and they are still in our service. So these are top notch, the newest possible frigates you can get your hands on. And that is also reflected in weaponry. When we look at the main gun, it has an Otto Molera 127mm dual-purpose gun. This is a very modern automatic cannon. It's, I think, actually standard on most of the modern frigates. Um, if you thought one goalkeeper was not enough, this ship sometimes also carried two. So if you really want to just erase everything, you can just carry this, take this thing out and have two goalkeepers on it. When we look at missiles, this is where you can just see that this is the most top-notch thing. It has a 40-cell Mark 41 vertical launch system. So these are the rockets that, fight, that uh, come out of the hatches and just fire straight up and just go annihilate anything that you have targeted. It also has 32 surface-to-air missiles. It has 32 uh, evolved Sea Sparrow missiles. It has eight Harpoon anti-ship missiles. It has twin torpedo launchers with the modern torpedoes that just home in on anything. This thing will destroy anything you come across. Also, something I uh, found quite funny. Um, like I just said, the Zeven Provincian, that's a name we've already heard before. But there are four ships of this class right now in existence. And that is the Zeven Provincian. That is also Trump. Yep, there, there's Trump again. And the Ruiter. And yes, of course, there's the Ruiter again. So we really like to reuse names. The last ship of this class is called uh, Averton. I've never actually heard that one before on any ship, so I suppose that's new. But yeah, I, I don't know why, but we Dutch, we really like to reuse our names. But this is just the 
we can just destroy anything. The final top-notch ship you're gonna get. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot of fun. And so do all these frigates. Uh, they just will give you a different gameplay experience uh, compared to, you know, some of the other larger ships out there. And, you know, variety is always good uh, when it comes to uh, the game in general. Just uh, making sure that instead of everything being the same, just giving some interesting parts you know to every nation to try and have a bit of fun with so as you can see we've been through the whole of the dutch naval tech tree we've also covered the dutch aviation tech tree and next time we'll be having a look at the ground stuff uh, to uh, cap off you know all of these wonderful ideas I think, at least from my personal opinion, the naval tech tree is easily the strongest out of the uh, major tech trees for the Dutch, and I would love to see, if we can't get a full tech tree here, at least some of it, you know, represented in the game in some style or some form. I just want to thank Super Cacti and Soldier for being here. I also want to, uh, want to thank Captain Versteeg for being part of the tech tree creators, and also Block High, Pytor, Cheesy Muffin and Private Woke for also uh, being involved in uh, setting up this tech tree. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Daniel Stanton, J. Wilt, John Ryman, Joseph Anders, Martinez, Moxie, Super Cacti, Uyens Terry, E Love Goat and Seductive Trashcan for supporting the channel.